Hey everybody, what's going on? Emo Tempest here, and we are standing with Brian Silva, sitting with Brian Silva at uh, Winter Cup, uh, North Carolina. Um, he had such a great day yesterday, uh, rocking one of the best decks, one of the most creative decks, obviously, uh, in the room. Him and Tori Kelly, uh, they practice a lot, so I'm here for you. I'm here getting it for you guys. Uh, what do you call this, man? Um, for me, I love to call it a Crystal Cat 4 deck. Crystal Cat 4, gotcha. Yes, All right, Brian, sir. talk to us about it, bud. All right, so I'll try to make this a little bit informative as well. So, of course, I wanted the Cat 4s to utilize itself to have reactions and uh, certain abilities. So, I first want to say with the Rosas is the, the overall power because it's three colors, as you can see, with Earth, Water, Wind. And I try to make sure that I accumulate crystals with the light card, of course, that's free play. Now, the only other color that's out of play here is the Lightning Hooded Man, but that's we're going to get back to this later. So, Rosa allows us to pay any Cat 4 color with any card, right? Unless it's like Light CP, which you can't really pay with. But um, right now, Rosa's ability as well, also, every time you play a Cecil card, even on your opponent's turn, you get to draw a card. So you want to make sure you maximize the way you use Rosa, uh, especially if you want to cheat in cards or play uh, Cecil's to draw more to get the more hand advantage with this. Uh, right now, we're playing three, six, nine, ten Cecil's. <laughs> Don't we're go far, you're next, bro. <laughs> we're playing ten Cecil's. Of course, the crystal generation with individual uh, protection, we use this to basically make sure that we don't have any type of like single spell removals. Uh, we have this Cecil here just to protect from against, uh, oh, oh, uh, how do I say this, damage overall on the board, such for Hecatons and, or Mono Fire. Um, we play this Cecil initially so we can bring all these other Cecils out, of course. And it has an S ability, so just in case you have more than one Cecil in hand, you can AK the board with something. And then you play the green Cecil if you want to cheat out other cards, such as uh, backups. Or if you play a Cat 4 card, you get to reactivate two cards. Now, the mo most reason that I love playing the Green Cecil is because with this Lena backup, if I activate this with another Water card, I can S her, use her S ability to make sure I can gener uh, bring a three cards out, like uh, Glaciella, Edge, a Porum, an Ursula, another Rosa. So many targets out here. So um, right now, with the Rosa Cecil, we definitely need to get the Seador on play. Usually, my first turn would always look like Rosa, pitch Seador to the break zone, summon this Cecil, and then I would throw these two to bring this out to the break zone. So it's three forwards with just <clears throat> two, like paying two cards in the break zone. And you draw a card, right, from the Rosa. And, and yeah. you draw the card from the Rosa. So, and then you you would have a chance to break this to bring and, out and another, another Cecil one, right. and draw another one. And draw another one next turn. Wow. Yes. Okay. It's great. I love it. If you don't have this card, but you have this Theodore in hand, <clears throat> you can play into this Cecil instead to bring this out. You throw Rosa, this Cecil, and this Theodore, pop any four-cost card on the field and it, uh, on your opponent's turn. And so, and, and then you draw a card for Rosa, right? So. These are like certain plays that I wanted to go around and say, let's, what can we do more with it, right? So, right now, a lot of people are thinking, okay, what are you gonna do with EX first? There's only two things that I love, of course, is the Ursula. <coughs> right now, I'm only running one of, but I wanna make sure I maximize the use of her ability because you pay one crystal, all your forts can't be affected by these, by the um, EX, EX first, first yeah. yes. And right now, if they activate it, and it's not something that targets my forward, I draw a card through to Leno's effect. Right. So I make sure I, I try to keep my hand advantage even though he does it in the express. Pick these up now, guys. They're cheap, I'm sure. I think they're like sitting at five bucks. <laughs> something like that, yeah. yes. <laughs> um, but as well, of course, everyone's very favorite staple is Porum. Yeah. Porum allows you to blank and um, you get a crystal if you're playing with this Cecil here. And then um, you're able to make sure that you force your opponent to do certain abilities uh, on the stack. And so you wanna make sure you have that so that you can react to those abilities, right? Like breaking the Cecil to do something else. Um, other crystal cards that, that we're gonna talk about, of course, is Robo. Robo allows you to pay a crystal, break a monster or a Ford, of course, and it allows you to get a backup back. Of course, since I'm only running two Lenas right now, the two cards that I only wanna get back with Robo is a Lena 
or a, or a backup that I decided to pitch earlier in the game. So I always want to generate uh, either Earth, Wind, or Water card, uh, depending on if I have Rosa on the field or not. Uh, but I always want to activate Lena's S ability. Uh, so to talk about a little bit more of the forwards, since I'm running a Wind, Earth, Water, Light, my fifth backup would always be either Shantoto or, T or Tyro, <coughs> and they would always pay for the fifth color. The reason why I'm talking about this is because I'm running one Fusoya. Fusoya would allow me to, again, get all modes because I don't need to pay water with Rose's ability. So I, all I have to be pay is five different colors that is not water, and Rose's ability will, will go off. And uh, it allows me to get all four modes. I would get the Mist Dragon from Break, uh, draw a card, bounce um, a backup, usually, that's what I would do, and then put a four to the top of the deck. Right now, I'm only running one of it because running more than one uh, makes it seem like that uh, it's too too slow in the deck because I want to make sure I have more reactions. Uh, right now, I'm still debating on um, running Warrior Light over Hooded Man because with the backup lineup, I can definitely run Warrior Light. But Hooded Man is a Cat 4 card. And so I get a free crystal, I get play for free, activate two backups, and, and uh, I can Re, you know, remove the green hooded man from my break zone to draw a card. So it's a, it's the same essential as a as a warrior of light, the four color multi multi element, but uh, with no first strike and no brave. <clears throat> right now, another crystal use is the glaciellas. Again, I can cheat it out with Lena. I make sure that I utilize this because I'm playing a lot of water cards such as Rosa, Cecil's, uh, Fusoya, Theodore's. I'm playing all these water cards so I can make sure that I can have them as a, a way to pay these crystals and blast the field. And right now, if I have five backups and I'm playing these three forwards and, and the Glaciella, that's already about 18,000 um, damage that I'm doing to one thing. Um, and of course, everyone doesn't have uh, an answer to when people flood their fields, right? So I was thinking about running Hecaton or running something uh, as a summon to, to try to get rid of things. But I said, okay, what's the less value that I can get by using all these cards that draw, like Lena, Cecil's, uh, Rosa. I'm drawing a lot here, what can I do with it? So I decided to run Shinryu. <coughs> Shinryu is a light card with my material, it allows me to play both of them. Uh, I was using Princess Sarah uh, for the all Earth, so I can auto-correct it. But this seems more Understandable because I want a board wipe with also fourth on the field. And I'll finish this up really. Uh, Ignis will definitely always pop the Thornton. And I would pop the Thornton, target a Cecil usually, and then bring it to my hand, break their fords, and then I would draw a card with because of the Thornton was broken. So right now these one ups are making sure that I can adapt well to Six other points. decks out there Anthony because Apio. sometimes yeah, I need a spot removal, sometimes I need to bounce cards. Seven These points. are usually Christian always Collins. the things. <coughs> now I want to run more than one right now, Eight but I'm play testing with one of these Tony edges. Snodgrass. It's a cat oh! it's a cat four card. Uh, uh, pay a crystal, pay two, Mom. comes back on the field. <laughs> And then it gets another crystal because we I have this card usually out. Top 32. But so I want to usually always want to run this either to play with this Cecil as a reaction we're gonna do because cards first. that always get things so from the break zone are very eight, dangerous. So I want to make sure that I always target it with Edge. I want to make sure I cheat out Edge as uh, much as possible as a reaction, be, uh, usually with Lena, so that I can um, remove cards from my opponent's break zone so, right. they, so they always lose advantages, CP advantages that way. And so, and everything else is basically told on itself. You guys know what Tyro does. You guys know that Claris searches out King Tycoon, that King Tycoon searches out for the Lena. So these backups all play easily for itself and everyone knows Mist Dragon. Mist Dragon is very multiplayable with canceling the summon and removing my opponent's break zone. Yeah, so the only question I have for you, Brad, I, sure. uh, is I know Cecil's the only thing that generates crystals, right? Uh, yes. Pretty much, on, other than, you know, Glaciela. Yes. Um, are you fine like that? Have you always had enough crystals since you're not playing any of the backups that gener other than Materia, right? Like so, so the so the main deck that I was playing against uh, that I, I usually have a 50 50 percent chance with them is Mono Ice or Ice Water, and those are the the times where I really need the crystals. So I would usually focus on Materia because <coughs> every turn I can generate a crystal with her by doling her and paying two, and sometimes I can get that two back just by playing the Cecil, but um. And then I can reactivate this and get a, you know another crystal over that. So materia always generates crystals at least once a turn for me. 
Um, so that's one card. Two cards will be, of course be Glass Shield Up. Three cards will be the Cecil. Every time I play a Cat 4, I get crystals. And then Ursula gets me a, another crystal. Right now, uh, the way I look at it is, is that even though I have five cards that get a crystal, I can always get one crystal every turn. Right. I could definitely try to play to get more crystals, which my old version of this deck had, but then I wasn't able to use those crystals as much often as I wanted to. So I feel like this is a perfect balance for me to use crystals and to have these crystals available that these, these, all these de cards can utilize. And um, right now, I decided that um, with Hooded Man and Theodore, that if, if I play them both on the field, <coughs> throw to break and then reactivate during the attack phase, and then I attack, and then and then Hooded Man would always reactivate. So I'm not as scared of my opponent dull freezing me because I'm always gonna have these cards to reactivate all of my force or my four, four my cat four force. No, I guess the last question I have for you then is um, the Cecils. Uh, you, I know you're playing ten. Um, are, are you interested in changing that number or, or alternating, like adding more of the the two one or something like that? Did any of that come up in your mind this weekend? Well, I, I always wanted to run two of this because this has always been like, uh, okay, what type of deck am I gonna run? Do I need a copy of this? Usually, this card is always in the break zone or, or always in the damage zone. And sometimes I need it and I can't search for it. <coughs> but the, may, the way I look at it is, is that if I can take out a Fusoya and put this in, great. I can use this uh, as an S ability. So, but most of the time, I would always have to have another Cecil in hand in order if I, if I want to use one of these two as an S abilities. So it is on my mind, right, to, to create more of a, a perfect balance. But right now, I'm, I'm feeling comfortable with running at one because. If my opponent Shantotos and I have an Earth Cecil, I want to protect this Earth Cecil, so I break it into something that I don't really want being removed. And it's usually always this guy. I, I would always play this card, draw a card, and then he gets removed because he has to block. That's sure. one of his abilities. So he's just a fodder for me to make sure that my card gets board wiped. He's the he's the reason why I I play just one. Okay. All right, man. Well, thanks so much. Uh, also, first of all, this is deck is awesome. I love it. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me about it. Uh, Congratulations this week on such a good showing during the team event. And uh, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to seeing what you're doing this season. Definitely. I will. Take care. <laughs>